Hey hi everyone, this is Mukesh from learn-official.com so Guys, in this video, we are going to talk about very interesting and very important activity in UI path called for each activity So we will be talking about how we can read files uh, via UI path as well So before jumping into the actual part, let's talk about what exactly we will cover in this session We'll talk about for each activity, when to use, how to use, everything about it we will be using this uh, for each activity in order to understand with string and then integers and once you understand with how it works with a string integer we'll also talk about how it works with object and finally once you understand everything we will try to read few text files using for each activities this example is only meant for text file in case if you have any other files definitely you need to use some other activities and some other packages as well so let's get started okay guys so till now we have seen all the basic activities like type click and all the basic variables and how to use the basic stuff now once we start moving to the critical topics or i will say the advanced things you definitely need a looping statement when i say looping statement it's a more of a programmatical term but when you talk about in ui path or any rpa tool it needs an activity right so now when it comes to looping statement or any kind of loop which will allow you to do the same thing again and again based on some conditions okay so here we are going to use one of the activity call for each okay so when you type for each you will find for each activity under control section now what it will do you can see it will allow you to do any activity or series of activities on a particular element okay now if you are from the programming background then it is very easy for you to relate with the collection like when you have series of things or list of things and you want to iterate it one by one okay so we are going to use this for each activity and let me tell you guys this is one of the most important activities that you need once you start uh, automating couple of critical business scenarios okay because you will not be dealing with a single uh, element or the thing or the processes you have to deal with multiple process multiple elements multiple files it can be anything so whenever you have more than one thing you need a for each activity which will uh, iterate and it will give you one by one it can be a file it can be a variable it can be anything so let's quickly see how to use it so in order to understand this activity let me create a separate uh, sequence and this time I will give for each demo so we will get a separate yeah there's the sequence which we created I will put in the, this is from where we will start now in order to show this I definitely need a collection or anything which is more than one combination so I will take two examples so that you can relate easily so in order to do this first of all and let me drop one activity call for each so again guys we have one uh, for each another called parallel for each so definitely this will be needing when you are running two process parallelly since we are dealing with single process we'll go with the for each in a similar way once we move forward we also have to deal with the data tables right when you have the structured data so there is one separate uh, data type here okay which is nothing but a data table so this <clears throat> for each row activity will help you to iterate the complete data in a sequence for the timing let's continue with for each and just drag and drop so it is asking you give me the expression or give me the condition and give me how you want to iterate so for this we need a list of things or list of variables or list, list of anything so what I will do I will create a list here let's say I'm creating I'm putting three names let's say Mukesh I'm giving here UI path and I'm also giving RPA so you can see this list have three entities right so when you have more than one you need for each so now we have three entities or the three variables or three data 
now how do you want to store them so by default this will come with a predefined variable called item you can see right now this is the most important part guys how you want to iterate this if it's a list of string you need to store this as a string if it is a list of integers you need to store as integers if you don't know the type you can save as an object if you don't know anything keep it the default but you should know the type so that you can iterate well in this case we know it is a string so we have changed this item into a string now what it will do every time it will take one data it will store in the item and then we can play with the data so what i will do first of all let me print okay so that you will see how it is iterating so i will take message box and i will simply print this item and i will also give like names are or let me give data or anything so this is the message which i am hard coding and this is nothing but the item which is coming i can give anything i can give it name and the same name i will be using here cool so it will do iteration it will assign one by one and we will be using this data so let's run this and let's see the output first it took mukesh when i hit enter it took ui path then it took rpa completed right now if i simply change this let's say if i give to one two and let me give some numbers like i'm not taking as a string i removed everything and let me make it 12 13 and let's say 14. now this is nothing but a list of numbers so when i will assign definitely this has to change so this time i can make it like these are some integers so why it is giving here now what i'm doing this is integer this is string so when i try to uh, do the concatenation it is giving that we are not able to convert it from a string to double can you see this the last line disallowed implicit conversion from string to double so whenever you have this case you need to convert this as a string the moment you convert into a string now you can co concatenate string versus string and now you can run it so in order to run let's run it again 12 13 14 so this is another example when you know a different type of data so this is iterating easily now let's come to the very important point when you don't know the which kind of data you are getting then how do you deal with it so let's see for this example i am taking out uh, this basic example and this is one of the most important use case as well that let's say you have a folder where your list of files and you want to read the data or let's say you want to just read the data and you want to use the same data into some different system or maybe you want to feed this data to some application so how you will read this data so this method which i'm showing it is only applicable as of now for text files so when you have different set of datas or different format of data like say excel csv database then we will have to change the process a little bit but again the concept will remain same when you have more than one file more than one column or anything you need for each so in this case we have three files right now how do we deal with it okay so let's first of all let me tell you a class called directory now if you see this class it is coming from system.io now this particular class has some static methods can you see the description which will have few methods which will allow you to create move and you can enumerate through the directories and the subdirectory so let's use one of the static method called get files now just pay attention what it does it accepts a location and it will give you list of files which is present in that directory as simple as that so when i say get files you need to provide the path right 
So the path which I have is this. That's all. Now what happens as soon as you say get files, it will return you all the files as a string format, right? So you can store this in a string. And if you don't know you let's say item, you come to this part and you can make this as an object. And you can come here. Okay, it is not running because it's an object. So what I'm doing here this time, what I did, this is the list of files which I got. Now item type I converted into an object because I don't know what kind of um, return type I have. So if I make it object and when I'm giving the same thing the message box, let's see what it returns. You simply run this. You can see first file, second file, third file. It automatically converted everything in, into an object. Now when I say item, this is nothing but a file. But what should I do with the message box? I don't have to print it, right? I need to read this file. So UiPath gives a very handy activity called read file, which simply says, give me just file name and I will read it. And what is the file name item? That's all. Now if you see this is now you need to put a small or I will say little common sense here. Okay. When you put mouse over it says I am not able to convert object into a string because the moment you use read file activity what it does it will accept a string which is nothing but a file path and it will read and again it will return as a string. But right now item is nothing but a object so it is not able to read object so th with this common sense we need to change this item into a string now it's clear get files will get set of strings we are storing into one by one each string is nothing but a file path that we are reading here now in order to make it clear that or in order to confirm it whether we have the correct data or not I will simply print the data. So how to get the output? The moment you hit enter, you can see it is asking where you want to store the output. So just do the right click, create a variable and let's say text file data. The moment you come here, you will get a variable. Okay, get a text file data and you can simply make it here just save this and again run it and before I run this program let me show you what content I have so file 1 have hello file 2 have UI path and file 3 have RPA or oh, you are awesome or oh, you can just change it let me close this and this is the final now this is particular sequence should be able to read all the files with the help of for each activity okay you can say hello ui path and rpa you are awesome with the help of just a small for each activity we are able to read all the data from text files it is just three files guys it is taking hardly few seconds you can see five seconds that too i had the message box now if you don't have a message box it will take less time and definitely when you have more than 100 and 200 files this will definitely is going to help not only this uh, reading text file guys in future we have to deal with excel file csv xml json it whatever kind of data you have this for each you have to use it 
okay so i hope you are clear with this for each activity i'm just showing with the text file but whenever you have more than one thing go ahead and use this once we move forward definitely we will be using for the time being just use the same examples or if you have some good examples please do that it will definitely clear your doubts that's all i have for this video in the next video we'll discuss more about different activities and with different use cases thank you so much guys have a nice day bye bye